today, 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 I want you to get your swords ready. Because we're going to be doing some digging in the Bible. Amen. We're going to be talking about the, the, the stone of stumbling. We're going to be talking about the stone that the builders have rejected. Lately in the upcoming years, we've been having a big um, rise in uh, people claiming themselves to be, to be Israelites. Especially in our African American communities. Many of us who are of, of the older generations, we, we may not even be paying attention to it, you know. But if you are out here and you are witnessing the people, because I'm constantly witnessing to people, and you're seeing a lot of uh, uprise of people uh, going into what they call Judaism. They're trying to claim that they are Jews, that they are the Israelites. And they're even putting it to the point where if you are black, you are of the tribe. You know, you have the tribes of Israel, but in many of the uh, major cities, this thing is spreading. Uh, just like in the days where uh, groups like the Nation of Islam spread, and we call them BRICS. BRICS, that's the abbreviation. They call Black Religious Identity Cults, and these things are on the rise. And many kids who who are hearing things like, uh, you know, Christianity is the white man's religion all of this kind of stuff, and which is totally, totally absurd. And we know most of the major religions uh, did not uh, come from European uh, history in, in antiquity. So usually most of the major religions, whether it's uh, Judaism, whether it is Christianity, uh, whether it's Islam, uh, it did not come out of Europe. And I can say about Europe, Europe received the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when they heard the preaching of Christ, many of them turned from cultic practices throughout history, began to come up, and different groups began to come up and merge out of what we call Christendom. And so we want to do a little bit of study on uh, uh, the stone of stumbling. We're going to be talking about the stone of stumbling. And this is a very, very important topic because... As Christians, I'm going to say this, we place our faith, faith in the finished work of Christ. What is the finished work of Christ? The finished work of Christ is what we call the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? The gospel is that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. In Judaism, there was a promised Messiah that was going to come to reconcile the children of Israel back to their God. Amen. Uh, but when he came, guess what they did? They rejected him. Now, we do have what we call Messianic Jews, those who have accepted Christ. But I want you to understand the majority of Israel as a nation many did reject their Messiah. And because they rejected their Messiah, God, God grafted in a wild branch. And that wild branch are the Gentiles. That's us. Because I want you to understand who we are as believers. Because we're not under the law. We are under grace. This is the time of the Gentiles. This is the time in which God is dealing with Gentiles because the majority of Israel have rejected their Messiah. But I want you to understand, he's not done with Israel yet. So when you read the book of Revelation, it's important to understand. Up to chapter 4, you see those seven churches, which basically is a, represent a representation of all the churches. So in that, you're going to have different types of Christians. And that's in the first four chapters of the book of Revelation. But then after that, he deals with Israel. And you see the Antichrist do what they call the abomination of desolation in Israel. And he's going to exalt himself and he's going to say that he is God. Uh, then these great plagues are going to begin to happen. And we know those great plagues. God is going to start pouring out his wrath on mankind in, 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 in that land 
because the land is a part of their covenant that he made with them. So when you read Deuteronomy 28, he says, if you, if you obey my covenants, if you obey my commandments, talking to Israel, not you, you're Gen we're Gentiles. We didn't even know nothing about this. Gentiles were a, a, a different group of people. So most people today, they try to mix everything in together. But when we read the Bible, we have to understand that the Bible must be rightly divided. Understanding that God dealt with Israel. God, God raised up Paul. Paul became the apostle to the Gentiles. And Paul began to spread the gospel throughout the world. Peter, James, and John, and all the other 12, they stayed basically in Jerusalem. People don't know that. So we jumble it all together. I want the church to be established in their faith. We walk by faith. We don't walk by the law. The letter was not even given to us. The letter was given to Israel. The oracles were given to Israel. The, the tabernacle was given to Israel. We never had those things. And so we're going to walk through the Bible today. We're going to talk about the stone of stumbling. Amen. Uh, because you're going to see, you're going to see the story of Israel. Now, whether you realize it or not, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are these are they are still under the old covenant. Can anybody tell me when does the new covenant begin? Acts chapter 2, God pours out the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, But after this you shall receive power, after which the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, I want you to hear this, in Jerusalem, in Judea, into Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. I want you to hear that order, because when you read the book of Acts, that's how it spreads. It spreads from Jerusalem. Because that's where the church began, in Jerusalem, on the day of Pentecost. Those were all Jews. Then, as the church began to receive persecution, they scattered, the churches scattered. Who was persecuting the church? The Jews. The church spreads to, 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 to Judea and to Samaria. And then when you get to Acts chapter 9, you see God raises up a guy by the name of Paul. And he has this Damascus Road experience. And Paul is, is an apostle sent to the nations. And he begins to deal with the Gentiles. And so, but before we get to that, I want to show you a little history of Israel. Amen. Now, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. He says, therefore, I tell you. Every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people. He says, but the blasphemy against the spirit, he says, will not be forgiven. He says, and whoever speaks a word against the son of man, he says, will be forgiven. Who's the son of man? Jesus. I want you to hear this. But then he says, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven him. He says, in this age or in the age to come. Now I want you to understand who he is talking to in this text. He's dealing with Israel here. Now Israel, uh, they have received the word through the prophets. They have received the word through the son of man who is Jesus. And then God will send the Holy Spirit to Israel and guess what they're going to do to the Holy Spirit? They're going to reject the Holy Spirit. This parable, this parable is called the parable of the tenants. The, the Jews, they're the tenants. They're the ones in Jerusalem. They're the ones in Zion. Let's hear another parable. He says, there was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it. He says, and dug a vine press in it and built a tower and, and he says, and leased it to tenants. So I want you to see Jerusalem. How many of you have seen the pretty pictures of Jerusalem with the walls of Jerusalem and you see the, the temple and the, the master built a city and basically his people are the tenants of it, the Jews. I want you to see this. He says, when the season of fruit drew near, Time to get the fruit from the land. He sent his servants. He says to the tenants to get it, to get the fruit. He says, and the tenants took his servants and, and beat one of them. 
He says, and killed another and stoned another. And again, he sent another servant more than the first. And they did the same to them. Who do you think they're talking about? The prophets. So I want you to understand Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. I want you to understand all of these prophets, Israel, God sent these prophets. God must deal with his people because he entered into what they call a bilateral covenant with Israel. More than he sent more servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. And finally, he sent his son to them, them saying, They will respect my son. Surely they're going to respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir? Him? Him? Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard. Where did they crucify Christ at? On Golgotha, on, Cal on Calvary's Hill. Out there, the skull of bones. They hung him out there with thieves. They took him out of Jerusalem. Do you see the parable? This, this is important, y'all. Because this is, this is their history. He says, and they, verse 39, and they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. He says, and when therefore the owner of the vineyard came, what will you, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lend out his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruit in their season. Who do you think he lent it to? The Gentiles. I want you to see this. And Jesus said to them, have you ever read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. He's become the cornerstone. Whenever you're building the building, the, the most important stone is the first cornerstone laid. Because everything goes off of that first cornerstone. If, if that cornerstone is not right, everything else is wrong. So he was the cornerstone that the builders, who were the builders? Who were given the oracles of the law? Who was given, who, who, who Moses? How many of y'all saw the Ten Commandments? Don't, 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 don't. How many of y'all seen all of that? Well, they were the people. Moses went up on that mountain, got the law for them, them tablets, and he came down. They were polluted and they was worshiping uh, this golden calf that they told Aaron to make. And they were having wild orgies and they were doing the things that Egyptians do. And Moses threw those tablets. This is those people. And these people have always been this way. How do we know? Here it is. The scriptures are telling you this. God has to deal with them because God did something to their hearts. He's God. And he stiffened the hearts of Israel. He has become the cornerstone. He says, this was the Lord's doing. He says, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing fruit. Go to Nehemiah in the, in the, in the Old Testament. I'm going to show you the history of Israel. Nehemiah 9.26. He says, nevertheless, they were disobedient, talking about Israel, and rebelled against you and cast your law behind their backs. They took the, look, they took the word and they did just like this, y'all. They took your law and threw it behind their backs. And what did they do? And killed your what? And killed your prophets. That's what Israel did. He says, who had warned them in order uh, to turn them back to you. Why were the prophets sent? Prophets are always sent to turn God's people back to him. So anytime you write, prophets don't come with flowery messages telling you about cars and houses and land. Prophets come to tell you that, that God's judgment is coming, turn back to him. God's wrath is coming, turn back to him. That's right. So Israel wound up going into bondage to the Assyrians. They wound up going into bondage to, 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 to the Babylonians. They begin to be cast out. Why? Because they rebelled against their God. 
In Luke 11, 47. Work these Bibles. I'm showing you a little history. Luke 11, 47. Remember, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is still dealing with Jews. It says, woe to you. For you built the tombs of the prophets, whom your fathers, what? They built in all of these monuments and these tombs for the prophets, whom their fathers killed. We're talking about Israel. I want to show you this. They rejected the prophets, they rejected the Son, and they rejected the Holy Spirit. You as a Gentile, you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. They can because it was prophesied to them to receive the Holy Spirit. Just like it was prophesied to them to receive the Son. It was prophesied to them by the prophets. So God sent the prophets, God sent the Son, God sent the Holy Spirit, and they rejected it all. And so they blasphemed God. You can't blaspheme God. You never had the Holy You had never had no promise. You were grafted in. And so you receive the gospel solely by what? Faith. You didn't have the law. Paul's argument through the whole New Testament, whether it's Galatians, 1st, 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, is saying you're not under the law. You are under the dispensation of grace. And because you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ and that alone, Christ plus nothing else, we don't have the law. We put our faith in Jesus the Christ. Amen. That's it. And then when we do that, the Holy Spirit comes in and regenerates us and we become born again. And all of a sudden you start saying, I'm different. Why are you different? Because he places his spirit inside of you because you received him by faith, not by works. Come on now. So you have nothing to boast about. So what you used to do, you start start changing. You don't know how it's happening, but you know it's the Holy Ghost inside of you. Doing a new thing in you. And, you, and so what you don't do is go back under the law. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have beguiled you? Because there were Judaizers in the church of Galatia that was telling them, oh, you have to be circumcised. These people never received circumcision. They were pagans. They were on the outskirts. They wasn't even allowed in the temple. I, I grafted them in. He says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Let's talk about us. John chapter 10. We will have one flock. So when you get to chapter 9, look what he says about Israel. What shall we say then? Because he did all of this preaching on grace. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it? Yes. We obtained it. Why? Because say, I just received it by faith. But Israel, no. Jews always needed signs and wonders. They needed water from a rock in the wilderness. They needed manna from heaven in the wilderness. They always need signs and wonders. But why? Because of their what? Unbelief. I, and I tell anybody this. The only thing that will cause you to go to hell is unbelief. The only sin that will cause you to go to hell is unbelief. That's the only sin. All of that, people say, oh, no. No. Unbelief. That was the problem with Israel. They could not just believe God. And Jesus became a stumbling block to them. Romans 9, 30. What shall we say then? That, Jew, that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it? That is a righteousness that is by faith? We obtained it by faith. Guess who else received it by faith, Sister Marie? Abraham. Abraham didn't have the law. But it was accounted to him as righteousness. Why? Because he believed God. Abraham was in the land of the Chaldeans of Babylon. He was in a pagan nation. His father, Terah, was worshiping pagan gods. And Abram heard a voice and he said, Abram, get thee from amongst your people and go to a land that and Abraham just began to go. Could you imagine that kind of thing? That's faith. You take God at his word. This is different. 
This is different than just following the law. Only thing that the law could do is tell you sin. It can never redeem you from sin. Verse 31. But that Israel who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law. They couldn't keep the law. So here it is. They trying to pursue the law and they can never keep the law. Because if you break one law, guess what? You're guilty of all the law. So they seeking the law, trying to obtain righteousness through the law, they can never get it. Look what he says. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. How many know this is sad? And so God says, okay, Israel, I'm going to send, I'm going to send my son, Isaiah 53. He says that he shall be what? Wounded for your transgression. In other words, he's going to be wounded for your sin. He's going to pay for your sin, Brother Warren. This is what he's telling Israel. How many know this is the best deal on the block? You mean to tell me he's going to take my sin? He's going to be wounded for my transgressions? He's going to be bruised for my iniquities? The chastisement of my peace shall be upon him and by his stripes? I'm going to be healed? Yeah. You can't beat this deal. Mm -hmm. Wonderful God. Guess what he did? Guess what they did? We don't want that. Mm -hmm. They just refused. See, the law is good. If you ever just start following the law without faith. See, the problem with Israel, they, uh, they wanted to live by the law, but they never, start, they never kept faith. So after a while, the sacrifices become meaningless. You're worshiping other gods, but you're still, you're doing the Passover and you're doing all of these ceremonial things. But you're not doing nothing by faith. As it is written, they have stumbled over the stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I am laying in Zion, that's Jerusalem, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Look at somebody say, whoever believes. Whoever Peter believed. John believed. They believed. There were some Jews that believed. But the majority of them, they did not believe. Who was doing the killing? Jews. They were killing their own brethren. You're looking at Israel's unbelief here. How many of you see that? Go to Kings real quick. First Kings. I'm going to shoot through this real quick. Because I want to show you that they, they, they were always a stiff-necked people. First Kings 18.13. First Kings 18.13. Has it not been told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a thousand men of the Lord's prophets. By fifties in the caves and fed them with bread and water. I mean, you know, uh, 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 her husband Ahab. Ahab was the king of the northern tribe of Israel. And guess what they were doing? They were killing the prophets. This is, this is Elijah talking. And Elijah's in a cave right here. He's scared. He's scared. He's running for his life. I have been very jealous for you, Lord. He says, the Lord of hosts, he says, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenants. They have left you. They have forsaken your covenants, thrown down your altars, Lord, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only I am left. He says, and, and they seek to take my life and to take it away. You see that? They're killing the prophets. This is Israel. 